My name is Steve Easley and uh, I'm a building forensics consultant. Uh, basically what I do is try to help builders build uh, building envelopes that are durable and long-lasting, that don't leak, that uh, are energy efficient and uh, healthy and safe to live in. And so today we're going to talk about the advantages of uh, different water management techniques, in particular rain screens and how rain screens work and what they do. And um, you know, rain screens have been around for over a hundred years. I'll show you some pictures of some of those in a little bit. But the idea is, is that if you're a builder, it's not how many homes a year that you build or even how much money you make that makes you successful. At the end of the day, it's how much money you get to keep. And how much money you get to keep depends on how you control your, your callback costs. So there's lots of opportunities that we can use to figure out ways to make buildings better. For example, here, if you see all this deterioration, this building was less than seven years old. And um, water got in behind the cladding system and uh, obviously caused a lot of deterioration, um, you know, from the OSB, the building paper. And what causes that? Most of the cladding systems are absorptive claddings. In other words, they tend to absorb moisture, and so water moves by capillary action, gets absorbed into the building wraps and the building papers, then it gets absorbed into the sheathing materials, which are very hydroscopic. They pick up this moisture, they can't dry out, so that's what causes building failures. We've also recognized that um, water leaks by themselves are very important, but also we get interior moisture issues, plumbing leaks, all those things are issues that we want to be careful about. Most of the construction defects that I investigate on a day-to-day -day basis are really caused from poor design, bad material choices, as well as faulty construction, not getting the pieces put together right, and then finally uninformed um, homeowners. Also a big change has happened in the energy codes in recent years. Since 2006, we've had three code cycles. The energy codes have gotten over 30% more energy efficient. And so how does that impact our buildings? Well, when you look at structures like this, the codes will also require weather-resistant barriers. Some of these barriers aren't so breathable. And when water gets trapped behind them, it can cause mold and deterioration and cause lots of problems. But with regards to energy codes, almost all energy codes in the colder climates require vapor retarders, and some of these vapor retarders can trap moisture. Like, for example, in this, you see all the mold here and all the moisture. Where did that moisture come from? Well, this moisture came from outside. It's got behind the wall system, and then, of course, it couldn't dry to the inside because of the plastic. So the solution is, is to prevent that moisture from getting in the wall system to begin with. And how we do that is having good drainage and, and good drying. Also, um, insulation's had a huge impact on moisture management in buildings. This home, was over, this home was built in the late 1700s, over 300 years old. It still is in service today. It still has the same siding on it. So how does a building that's 300 years old have unpainted siding that's lasted this long? Well. Before we started insulating buildings, buildings had a lot of heat loss. So that heat loss kept all the building components, guess what? Warm and therefore dry. And so that's how these, when we started insulating buildings, that basically traps the moisture and um, also reduces the drying potential. And so we gotta pay close attention to that. So most of the water leaks in wall systems are really around windows and doors, flashing systems, and of course we have interior moisture. Interior air contains moisture, when that moisture comes in contact with a cold surface, we can have lots of problems. Also it's important to note that the, inner, the building codes, this is an excerpt from the 2012 IRC building codes, they have gotten substantially stricter with regards to the flashing requirements, with regards to having wall systems that have the capacity to drain and dry. So the codes have gotten stricter, we should be aware of those things. It used to be the code basically said, build the building so it doesn't leak. Now we have specific flashing requirements, and the codes do reference uh, rain screens as well. So you might be asking yourself, why do, why do we need rain screens? Why do, what is a rain screen? Well, a rain screen is basically um, a simple airspace that happens between your weather-resistant barrier and your exterior cladding. And this airspace allows for drainage and drying. So when you look at most cladding systems, like wood, engineered wood, stucco, brick, stone, cement-based siding, they're all what we call reservoir cladding materials. That means that these cladding materials absorb water, and more importantly, they store water. Let me show you an example. Like, for example, when you look at wood siding, you know, it's de definitely absorbed moisture, and over time, it deteriorates. Take, for example, synthetic stone, which is very popular today. Why is it that you can just stick this stone to the wall? You don't need to have a foundation. That's a great thing, right? Save money. But how does this react with moisture? How are they able to make it so lightweight to be able to allow it to just stick to the wall, right? That's because it's very porous. Well, porous materials store lots of water. And so when this moisture gets trapped in these 
the stones, they basically gravitate through capillary action into the wall system. Like for example, here is a um, $3 million home that's uh, in Michigan. And uh, you know it's gonna be an interesting day when you see mushrooms going out of the stonework. What causes that? Well, if you look at from the outside to inside, this is a synthetic stone. This is a layer of building paper, which is required by code, your OSV, and then the interior wall system. This building was less than three years old and had substantial structural damage to it. Now, in most states, the statute limitation for construction defects for structural issues are anywhere between seven and 10 years. Most states, it's 10 years. So this would definitely be considered a structural defect and you would, could potentially be liable uh, for replacing all the exterior sheathing, the stonework, and so forth. It's not that the stone is bad, it's just that we don't have a system in place where it can actually drain and dry. This is a roof wall intersection, didn't have any flashing. So the moisture builds up behind this and can't dry or get out and um, leads to problems like you're seeing. There's another example of um, engineered wood siding moving moisture by capillary action. So all these cladding systems, no matter what they are, are not immune from any types of uh, uh, moisture systems. So remember, it only takes minutes for building materials to get wet, but guess what? It takes days, weeks, or months for them to dry out. So the solution, when we talk about rain screens, it's really very simple. It's the capacity of creating a design in a wall system that has the capacity to drain and to dry. So the first thing we want to do is deflect the water away. The second thing we want to do is make sure we drain the water as fast as possible because the more we drain, the less the building has to dry out. So the, simple, the system is very simple. You have a series of furring strips. So from outside to inside, you have your oriented strand board or your plywood sheeting. And you have um, your uh, weather barrier, like for example, uh, something that's UV rated. And then you have your, uh, in this case, fiber on cladding system that is um, got a 25 year warranty, so you don't worry about it chipping, fading, all the types of things that you might see with other types of siding systems. But the beauty of this system is that water that hits this, basically, even though you have slats in here, this is what we call an open rain screen design. We have closed rain screens and we have open rain screens. This is what we call an open rain screen design. So even what water would get through this, it basically runs down the back of the cladding and then this whole area has the capacity to have air circulation behind it so you have drying potential as well as very, very good drainage. So it's a simple system, it's a tried and proven system. And the beauty of this is you get the look of wood you know, without the maintenance, the durability, all the headaches that are associated with that. And again, yeah, these materials were designed for the tough environment of decking, so you can imagine if it can survive on a deck, you know how well it's gonna do on a wall. So essentially these furring strips are at 16 inches on center. In the case we have here, we have wood furring strips, but they also make um, synthetic products like this. This comes on a roll, and basically you would just attach this, you know, to the uh, sheathing, and then your uh, fiber on cladding in this example you screw through that into the studs and that becomes your structural attachment. Um, you can also buy this stuff in sheet goods that are f rolls that are five feet tall and you could put this across the entire wall if you wanted to. But if you see this matrix type design it allows for moisture and air to kind of breathe and, and it's not a design that traps, uh, traps moisture. So when we talk about a rain screen concept we're basically talking about having a, uh, this fiber on cladding system Water that gets behind here runs down the back side of this, runs out to daylight. Likewise, we have air circulation and drying, and then of course we always, always by code, would have a weather resistant barrier similar to, uh, to what you see here. So it's a simple system. And as I mentioned, rain screens have been around for over 100 years. This is a, a 12,500 12, square foot mansion that I did some forensic on in San Francisco. This was built in 1904. And the wall system was two by eight redwood studs, one by eight uh, uh, diagonal sheathing. Over the top of that, they put um, building paper and they put one by one furring strips. And they put their metal lath and their stucco. This was built in 1904. I took this apart last January and the building paper, 100 plus years later, looked like the day I put it on. I, it was put on rather, not I put it on. I feel that way sometimes. But um, no, this is amazing how well it lasted. So what made that system work? It's the airspace. So this had the capacity to not allow these water absorptive materials to be in contact with it, and at the same time allow for drainage and drying. 
So that essentially is how a, a rain screen works. It's a simple design, as you can tell here, it looks great. And I'm um, happy to answer any questions if you have about this in terms of the, the way this is installed. But it's a pretty simple system. It's, um, it's a really a bolt-proof wall system. Literally, it works really quite well.